Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. SAS, where we try to augment Dutch roll, Dutch roll, omega and zeta. Okay. We have seen that omega d from first or 1 d analysis, it is directly proportional to n beta in one dimensional right and n beta has c n beta into this because n beta is half rho v square s v c n beta by i z z. So, if I want to increase omega Dutch roll that means I have to increase c n beta. Remember for longitudinal natural frequency we have to increase the C m alpha. So, what should be the logic here? You have the airplane and all this yawing motion we are attributing authority to the rudder. Okay. So, let us say this is I am tapping beta gain the gain I am multiplying and I am deflecting delta r proportional to beta right okay so what is happening by doing this i am adding delta cn yawing moment that will be cn delta r into delta r so that will be equal to cn delta r into k beta so that is delta cn additional so additional cn beta will be how much that is delta cn by beta that is k c n delta r. So, this is delta c n beta. So, let us come back again here. Suppose I have got Dutch roll frequency basic, I had let us say w d b and say basic. Now, with this basic whatever the airplane has, we found the corresponding C n beta was C n beta basic. Now, you want to increase and to increase Dutch roll frequency, hence C n beta has to be increased. How much it has to be increased? For that, for approximate value, I can use the expression for omega d, omega d equal to under root of half rho v square s c n beta by i z z. So, all these values I know from here whatever Dutch roll nu is required that I put on the left hand side and for a rho v and s and i z z I know what is the c n beta nu required total right. So, I have got c n beta is C n beta basic plus C n beta which will come from SAS that is the additional okay. and this is a required or desired or required whatever you say. Who decide this C n beta desired that is linked to whatever omega d required which we got approximately from here right. So, now I know that delta C n beta SAS should be equal to C n beta desired minus C n beta basic and this is equal to K C n delta r it has come from here right. So, I can easily find out the K is C n beta desired 
or referred minus C n beta basic divided by C n delta r. So, I know what value of k is required, but always remember if k is too high, it may make the system unstable. So, that is why I always say whatever value comes, then again you have to go back to the a s 4 plus b s q plus c s square plus d s plus e equal to 0 and see where are the roots lying, right. Especially those who will be working on control, you will find this is done routinely, although there are shortcut way of getting some first information. Okay. So, now the next question comes if I am deflecting delta r as k beta, then what happens is there any other derivative that gets affected? See that in C y we have one term called C y delta r into delta r. So, this will now get additional effect C y delta into k beta. Okay. So, here we had C y beta into beta, then may be C y p into p b by 2 v or 2 v 1 like this blah blah right. So, now C y beta into beta was there, now C y delta into delta, so this is C y delta into k beta. So, finally you find C y beta plus k C y delta r into beta. So, your C y beta effectively gets modified right, because C n beta has got modified. So, C y beta also gets modified. So, we have to see what is the effect of this the overall the stability of the system. Right? This understanding is must. What is the final thing? You know from the handling quality requirement how much omega d you need to have. If it is less, you have to increase, so you have to increase C n beta. If it is more, you have to reduce, so reduce C n beta. So, accordingly you decide what type of beta feeding you will be doing for natural frequency. Okay. Once that is done, now if you want to change the damping ratio for Dutch roll and you know that damping ratio will be proportional to N r and N r is proportional to C N r. What was C N r? Whatever is C m q for longitudinal mode, C N r is for directional mode. Right. That is your damping. Okay. So, I have to ensure that if I want to increase zeta, I need to increase C n r. If you want to decrease zeta, I have to decrease C n r in flight through SAS. So, what will be the approach? Again, approach is same. This is the aircraft. Now, you will be tapping r and Again, you multiply with this and delta r you put as k r, deflect delta r with which is proportional to rate and how do you measure rate? You have a rate gyro, you can measure this. So, the moment you do this, how much delta c n this will introduce that will be c n delta r into delta r and this is equal to c n delta r into k r. So, this is delta c n. So, I divide delta c n by r r b by 2 u 1 to get c n r additional that is equal to c n delta r k r divided by r b by 2 u 1. Right? So, this uh, r r gets cancelled. So, you have 2 u 1 by b k into c n delta r. So, that is the additional c n r you have to generate through SAS. So, it is very simple now. What is the how do I find additional delta c n r? You know c n r basic which was for the aircraft, you know c n r desired so that you have right type of damping ratio which you get approximately using one dimensional analysis and so delta c n r is nothing but c n r desired minus c n r basic that is equal to delta c n r and that is equal to just now we derived 2 
u 1 b into k c n delta r. So, you can find that k in this case will be c n r desired minus c n r basic divided by c n delta r into b by 2 u 1. Am I correct? So, k will be equal to into b b by 2 u 1. Please check yourself. Okay? And this is c n delta r. This is k. Right? And again, as you know that, I have to fit this back to the dynamic stability exact equation and see how the roots are changing because it will have an effect in other derivatives as well. Okay. See, I always say that if this is the value of k, which will take care of C n r, new value required, so that you have a correct damping ratio, but we should also check that this will have effect in other derivatives. For example, if I see rolling moment coefficient C l is C l p into P b by 2 u 1 plus C l beta into beta plus C l r into r b by 2 u 1 plus C l delta r into delta r. Now, check here what is happening? We are putting delta r equal to k r, this r, the same thing, same notation, do not get confused, this is r and this is r. Okay. So, then check out here it is C l r into r b by 2 u 1 plus C l delta r into for delta you write k r. So, effectively what is happening? You see what is happening now? If I take this is r is lying here, here r is lying here. So, now, this C L R effective C L R is getting modified. Okay? So, you, this C L R prime will be the sum of these two and appropriately you take B by 2 U 1. So, what I do? I write this simply as this is C L R into R B by 2 U 1 plus C L R into K R. Okay? And I then write this as C L R into B by 2 U 1 K. I multiply this and same thing. So, I can take C L R into R B by 2 U 1 R. R is here. It is R. So, if I take R B by 2 U 1 from here and here, so I have R B by 2 U 1 and I come and I say C L R plus C L R K 2 U 1 by B, right? Because I have taken R B by 2, yes, correct. You can yourself also do. Please understand this. So, this is the effective C L R now, sum of all this. So, what has happened? Although you wanted to increase the Dutch roll frequency by giving a rate such that rudder is deflected proportional to the rate, although zeta has increased, but you have changed the value of C L R, right. So, this is again a cross coupling happening. So, you have to be very careful and go back to those exact solution and see where are the roots lying, are we achieving those things which we are looking for or not. But the beginning is here, if this is correct, then rest is just mechanics, just mechanically you can do. So, I thought I will give you this insight here on this and I request you please do it yourself. Okay. This thing you should do yourself, thank you very much.